In this tutorial, we'll look at how to create a responsive three column layout in HTML and CSS. All right, so I have a simple example here. I just have an HTML boilerplate currently empty. So I'm gonna add three boxes here. Box one, let's say we have box two and box three. Now you may have some kind of content in here like text or an image. That doesn't really matter for this overall layout. So I'm just gonna keep it empty for now. I'm gonna select them in the CSS. So we have box one, box two, and box three. And let's say that they all have some height and width. Let's say they have a width of, actually let's make it a bit smaller. Let's say they have a width of 100 pixels. Uh, let's make it 150 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. And also they will have different background colors. Let's make this orange. And I will just copy this and change this one to let's say purple. And this one will get, uh, let's see, maybe some other color, aqua. Okay, so let's see what we get. So if I refresh here, this is what we have. It's a bit small, so let me zoom here. Okay, now what we want is that they sit on the same line horizontally, right? Or like a row layout. And whenever you work with layouts in CSS, most of the time you want to use something called Flexbox. So it's really important that you have learned Flexbox if you want to work in web development or web design, uh, because it's really the most, like most critical concept in CSS, in my opinion. I have a course on CSS. Definitely check it out if you want to take it to a professional level. The link is in the description, but it definitely covers Flexbox, but also CSS Grid. Uh, but honestly, Flexbox is really the most important concept. So what you can do, if we want to use Flexbox, we need to identify the parent element of these boxes. So here it would be the body element actually, but maybe you have some kind of container element. Right, so maybe they're sitting in some other element. Right, so now they're sitting in this div with a class of container. Right, so I'm gonna make the container element the so-called flex container. So I can say display flex. And actually, before I do that, let me show you that by adding the container, nothing has changed yet. But now if I say display flex on the container, the default layout in Flexbox is actually that horizontal layout. Maybe you want this these um, boxes to take up the entire width, right? Because now there's some empty space here on the right side, right? Because they, they have a maximum width of 150 pixels here, right? And we also have this other we weird uh, space here. That's simply because the browser adds some default styling to a lot of elements. It actually adds some padding to the, bo to the body element element. So typically what people do is actually they remove it, they select all elements on the page and they remove the default styling on all elements like padding but also margin. And usually we also set the box sizing property to border box. This is a very typical CSS reset. You don't have to understand this last line, it's actually very advanced. I have a separate video on that. But when we do that you'll see we've gotten rid of that weird uh, white space but it's still not taking up the entire width here. So what if you want to have these items take up the entire width. Well, this is actually very easy to do with Flexbox, so we can remove this, this, uh, and instead we're going to use the flex property. So with flex, we can sort of determine what, what portion of the available space that each box should get, right? So here we're giving, we're giving, we're giving each box a proportion of one. So they're all going to be equally big, right? They're taking up all the space and the space has been divided equally amongst them because they all have the same portion. Maybe the second box should be much bigger. Maybe they should get three portions. So it's, it's going to be three times as big as the first box. Right? So now this, this one is three times as big as this one. This one only got one. This one has three. So it's three times as big. This one only got one too. So it's, this one is also three times as big as this one, right? So you can play around with the proportions like that. I'll just keep them equally big for now, right? And you can see when I make it smaller or bigger, um, they will stay like this, right? They will simply re readjust their size. All right, now typically on smaller viewports, like um, a viewport, the, view, the viewport is the visible area of the web page, right? So that's what we see here. It does not include the address bar, right? So the viewport can be bigger or smaller. Now on mobile and tablet, for example, it's gonna be smaller, right? Now what we want usually on smaller viewports, right? On smaller devices is that the layout becomes more vertical, right? So it's, it's gonna get quite cramped like this, right? So typically we wanna get like a vertical flow once we make it, um, once we get on smaller devices. So we can play around here in the inspector tools. We could say at let's say uh, 600 pixels perhaps, right? 600 pixels, we want it to flow vertically. So what we can do is we can write a media query we can say when on small viewports, so for example, when the, when the width is at most 600 pixels, um, we're gonna select this container and 
um, because we're, we're using these portions here, we're going to select the container and we're going to change the flex direction. So the default is actually row, right? That horizontal layout that you get initially with Flexbox, that's actually the default. You can also change it to column to get a vertical flow. Um, initially, it's the, the direction is row, right? So this flex property, the portion that they get, that's like a, a horizontal portion, right? Here, when we change it to vertical flow, this is going to be a vertical uh, portion that they're going to get. Right, but the, the container has no height. So it means one portion of what exactly, because there's not gonna be any height. So we can also give this container some height, just so you know it, there is some space to divide. Uh, so let's see if we give it a height of 500 pixels. Now I'm gonna refresh. So on wider viewports, we still have this, but when it hits the 600 pixels, if you look closely, so this is a very nice responsive column layout with Flexbox. Now you can make it a little bit more sophisticated as well. You don't even need a media query. So let's go back to this um, layout that we have. Let me actually close here. So this is what we have, right, with Flexbox. Now maybe you want there to be some wrapping. So maybe the third one should wrap onto like a new line at some point when it becomes too cramped, right? And, and so you're gonna get these two on the first line and this one should take up all the space below there. And that's also easy to do with Flexbox because you can add another value here for the flex property. The flex property is actually a shorthand for flex grow, but also for the so-called flex basis. You don't really have to understand how that uh, works specifically, but we can we can set sort of um, like a minimum, a minimum size that it should be. So uh, when there is not enough space anymore to be that 100 pixels, it will wrap onto a new line. So we're gonna give each of them a flex basis of 100 pixels. And then if you want them to wrap onto a new line, you do have to make it, you, you do have to make it explicit. You have to use flex wrap wrap. So now if we refresh and actually I'm going to use the inspector tools again. So now I have no media query. So let's see what happens when we make it smaller and smaller. So at some point there's not going to be enough space anymore to be 100 pixels wide. So right now they're both, they're all like 102.67 pixels wide. So let's see what happens. So you can see at some point there's not enough space anymore to be 100 pixels wide. So this one moves to the other uh, line and it automatically takes up all the all the space here because we're using the flex one, right? So it's, it's allowed to grow because we're using flex grow one. So on this line, this is the only one competing for that available space. So it's going to get all the space. On the first line, these two are still competing, right? They're, they still have the same portion. So they're still going to be equally big, right? Now at some point, when we make it smaller and smaller, there's not enough space anymore for this one or these two to be 100 pixels wide either. So you're going to get this layout, right? This is actually a very nice responsive layout. You don't even need a media query to achieve this. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.